going on everybody, it's Steven here and welcome back to another China Phone review and today we're going to have a look at the Yumi Ion Yay. Now this device here is very hot right now and it was on pre-sale the last month but still not shipped out I think. I think they delayed it to the 15th or 17th of August. Not sure why because um, it's actually the final software version. Maybe they're going to change some hardware, I don't know, I really don't know. But um, I can tell you that I have here an engineering software sample which should be the final version and also the latest software version. I was just waiting for this because I don't want to rush in with the review and today I want to tell you everything you should know about the Yumi Ion, if it's good or not, what is shit, what is good and I would say let's get directly started. Alright alright, so the Yumi Ion retails for something like 160 euro on efogshop.com, price is okay for the specs you get. Then it claims to be a metal body foam, but please, only the back cover here is metal and the inner frame. So the top and the bottom here um, are plastic covers. This is because of the antenna, so you get a better signal quality with those plastic caps instead of a full metal body. Okay, so um, if you're okay with that, then the phone is looking really good. So I like the design. It's something new. It's a bit curved here and it doesn't look too bad. It comes with some gimmick features like iPrint ID, which is total crap. I will later show you that. And also the heart rate monitor. I mean, it's, it's nice to play with that, but I wouldn't use it. So 5.5 inches full HD MTK6753, it's an octa-core processor running at 1.3 GHz, so it's slower clocked than the MTK6752, that also means um, it drains less power. It comes, um, as I've said, with a full HD display and that processor, so that's a good combination with a 3000 mAh battery, and this should give you um, around a day of battery lifetime. I will tell you later um, what battery lifetime I've got. Then it supports quad band on GSM, it supports triple band on WCDMA and in there we should have B1, B3, B7, so the FTD LT frequencies, but we'll later check that out in the engineering application. And it comes with 3 gigs of RAM plus 16 gigs of ROM, 30 megapixel main camera, I will later show you the sensor, and 8 megapixel front facing camera. Android 5.1 straight out of the box as we can see here, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, you can see I did an unboxing, if you want to see it, it's on my channel, and it comes with, with those, um, how we call it, flip covers, but actually it's just um, something you have to glue to the back of the Yumi Ion. So I'm not a huge fan of them, but yeah, um, if you want to see them I will later put one on the phone and you can also check them out in my unboxing okay guys and let's get directly started and let's have a look at the smartphone now just some quick words about the charging accessories and all the accessories inside of the box First of all, here we have an OTG cable. And OTG is fully supported, you can use game pads, you can use flash drives, whatever you want to. Then here we have the charger, and it's a 5 watt charger. Um, I could drain something like 4.5 watts with my measurements, and it's quite okay, but it's no quick charging. You see, output 5 volts, 1 amp. The quality looks quite decent, you can find this kind of charger on a lot of China phones, and it comes with the Yumi branding. We can also have a quick look at the USB cable. USB cables from Yumi, they always Always look kind of good like um, on the Yumi Zero also this one here comes with a metal cover case or whatever around the USB connectors so it looks like really nice quality but well um, I don't really care about the USB cable okay so the accessories they're looking good but there is no quick charging on the Yumi Ion definitely a feature which I would like to have on that smartphone now here's another thing I want to say about the accessories so here we have the flip cover and the buttons um, on that phone they are placed on the left side of the frame and actually here you can see that's the flip cover so it really sucks to press the buttons here and to lock the display and actually um, the cover itself should lock the display because here we have some kind of metal part or magnet for the whole sensor but if I now close the damn cover and open it up it's still awake so somehow um, the lock mechanism is not working and this is kind of pain in the ass because you have to find the damn um, power button I'm not sure where it is up or down no it's down here and it's really not so nice to press here with the flip cover so um, if I would be you I wouldn't get the cover at all um, if it's not included for free okay then let's just go and let's have a look at the system now here comes the Yumi Ion and even though it's not a full metal body phone I somehow like the design so we can just have a look at the back side actually the only thing which is made out of metal it's that back cover here and the inner frame of the phone so the phone is quite stable though you cannot bend it actually but um, it's not fully made out of metal 
Now the bottom side here, the top side, so those are actually just plastic covers and you have here all the antennas like GSM antenna, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and this gives you an overall better um, reception. And yeah, the design is quite nice. As you can see, it's a bit curved and um, this makes it look a little bit slimmer than it actually is because um, yeah, um, the visual thickness, it's um, around 5 millimeters, but actually the phone is thicker and you can find the exact dimensions down below in the description. Okay, um, yeah, that's the Yumi Ion here from the outside. The display itself, it's looking good. I have no problem here to read it outside in sunlight. The viewing angles and everything, it's looking definitely good and it's full HD IPS and yeah, nothing to say about the display. Then I would say guys, let's go and let's have a closer look at all the things here on the Yumi Ion. Now let's have a look at the top of the front side and here you can see several things which you maybe cannot see on some other smartphones like the front LED flash. I mean actually it's kind of useless, I mean who takes selfies at night? But um, I first of all thought that is useful for the iFinity feature so to unlock your display uh, with your eyes. But no it's actually not being used in a dark room so yeah um, it's nice to have but um, I think this feature is kind of useless. In the middle here we have the speaker as you can see kind of small but call quality is definitely okay. Here we have the front facing camera. Um, you'll see a quality test later and here we have light and proximity sensor. So um, the sensors and the front facing camera it can act as a heart rate monitor and I will later show you that but yeah the results they are just totally random. Then just like many many other China phones also the Yumi Ion comes with a black bar around the display and it looks okay if you have a black wallpaper because then it looks like um, the phone would be almost bezel-less but if you have a bright and colorful for wallpaper then the contrast with the white um, frame looks somehow a little bit strange but well it's the design of the phone and it's not that annoying like on the elephone p7000 but what really sucks is that you don't have any capacitive touch buttons at the bottom so the buttons there inside of the display so you lose some space in my opinion and here's um, enough space for capacitive touch buttons they would be easy to reach so why not even um, here over the LED there would be enough space for a button but well um, you have all the buttons inside of the display so software buttons we have here the back button home button and menu button so that's basically it guys and here at the bottom you have the multicolor notification LED which looks really really great now if we have a look at the top of the phone here from this side you can see that the body is curved and I mean the design it's looking really kind of nice but I don't like that the camera is coming out of the device here but um, if you're okay with that then why not it's not looking so bad. So the top features actually just the 3.5mm headphone jack which you can see on the left side of the frame here at the top. Then let's have a look at the opposite side and here we have the bottom microphone for doing calls but watch out guys this phone comes with two microphones for noise cancellation and there's another one on the back side and here we have the micro USB port to charge it or to connect it to the computer but once again here so the bottom cap or bottom cover it's just made out of plastic buttons of the Yumi Ion they are placed on the left side of the frame I'm not so happy with that because if you use the flip cover then it actually covers the buttons and it's really a pain in the ass to press them but the buttons they feel pretty good without the cover so we have here a metal power button metal volume down and volume up button and yeah it feels actually kind of good but I would be more happy with the buttons on the right side because of the flip cover and here you can see the screws so we have three screws on each side if you want to remove the back cover so that metal plate then you just have to unscrew the screws and then you can lift it off. Now if you want to see that I have a dismantling video on my channel so make sure you check it out. Now the right side of the frame holds the SIM card tray and you have to choose between two SIM cards and one SIM card and one micro SD card. So you can extend your internal memory. My 64GB SD card works without the problems it's a micro SD card but then you can only use one SIM card and I'm using currently one nano SIM card and one 64GB micro SD card which works without the problem. So um, you really have to choose do you want storage or do you want the dual sim feature but you cannot use both at the same time so that's unfortunately not possible on the Yumi Ion. But except of that there's actually nothing special here all around the frame. 
Now here's the top cover of the backside and if you did see my dismantling video then you know this part here it's made out of plastic then this here is another microphone so that's no reset button because it's a unibody phone um, this is just a second microphone I can confirm that here we have the dual tone LED flash so that is looking really good and here we have the rear camera which is coming a little bit out of the device and it should be an I think 8 megapixel Sony IMX 214 or something like that or 13 but we'll check it out um, as soon as we're in the system. Okay, um, then let's go down here. So here you can see the Yumi logo. Then here at the bottom you see um, the iron and designed by Yumi, so actually the logo again. And here we have the speaker. And the speaker sounds really kind of crappy, so I absolutely don't like the speaker. They should just um, invest like two dollars more and get some decent speaker in this device because the speaker you get on the Yumi iron really sucks in my opinion. But um, the rest of the phone looks actually kind of nice. Okay, so that's everything um, from the Yumi Ion. And now I would say let's go and let's jump into Android. So there we go, boys and girls. We're now here in Android 5.1 on the Yumi Ion. And the system UI is really kind of nice. So there's nothing to say about it. It's really smooth and fast. There was only a bug. Um, if I did just hit the volume up button very fast and for a longer time, it was crashing the system. But funny thing is, I just did set the language down to English from German and now it works. And also if I switch back, so really strange. There are just some small bugs, like sometimes some apps are crashing, but um, it's okay. That also happens on my S6 Edge. Okay, then let's go to the settings. Let's check everything out here. And you see the buttons here. They always waste a lot of space here on the screen. That's something I absolutely absolutely don't like. Let's go here to about the phone. We have his system updates and we have system software updates. If you have um, the system update already on your SD card, you can just start the update here. And the system updates, so all the OTAs I've received, they were full um, system updates, so the full system image. And that means the update was 600 megabytes to download. Maybe in the future not, I'm not sure about this, but I hope that Yumi continues the software support because in the first week I had 10 OTAs. We're currently here on Android 5.1 and here you can see the build number. So I started with 0.02 and now I'm at 0.10. So there were eight OTAs in one week, really nice. Here you can see the Android version and we can confirm here that this is Android 5.1 and here's the Android e stack. So Android 5.1 runs here in 64 bits. That's really great. It's all supported by the processor, the MTK6753. Then let's go up all the way here to Wi-Fi. Let's check out the Wi-Fi signal. I would say Wi-Fi signal is good, but not perfect. Now the router is in the next room. You see it supports the full speed 135 Mbits. I'm currently using 2.4 gigahertz. And um, Wi-Fi is not too bad. Um, probably it would be worse if it would be a full metal body phone. So the plastic caps um, at the top and bottom, yeah, they also improve the signal a lot. Bluetooth, um, I was using it with the dash in my car and I had no problem. Also, I used the Yumi um, Voix Blue, so I did a review on those Bluetooth speakers too. Wasn't really bad. Then here under more, you can see the usual stuff you have on every Android phone. But let's go all the way down here to display and you see mirror vision is included. So if you want to tweak a display or just whatever you want to, I'm actually not using that at all, then you can do it here. Here we have the pulse notification light. So you can switch it off, for instance, if you don't want that it lights up while charging or on low battery or miss notifications. And you can switch um, between the colors. So we have here red, green, blue, yellow, yeah, whatever you want to. And for missed notifications, the same. So for calls, SMS and miscellaneous stuff like other notifications. But you can also just use another app to control that. So basically, um, you can fully customize that LED here, which I think is um, a real big plus. Okay, so that's basically it here on the display. Then let's have a look at storage. And here you can see it comes with one big partition. That's really important. Now, some um, some China phones, they have an app limit. So um, not unified storage. That means you have two partitions. Then it says running out of storage. And it's not so easy to fix that. So I really prefer having a 16 gig phone, but um, one big partition, everything usable. And that's really nice here. 
So let's have a look at the battery stats and you see um, I wasn't using it so much so most of the time without SIM card except of the last days but um, the battery lifetime is really not too bad. I will do another test today and at the end of this review you will hear my final conclusion about it. But one day I would say that's no problem at all. It wasn't raining a lot of um, battery and I've used it now with Wi-Fi. I was downloading apps and everything so it seems to be kind of good and I will now use it um, the whole day and then tell you at the end of this video my battery lifetime and my yeah my personal opinion on it okay now let's have a quick look at apps running in the background so we can see the memory consumption and there we go running loading and um, this phone should come with three gigs of RAM but the system UI and everything it takes it consumes some RAM so um, this consumes more than 1.1 gig and that means we have 1.7 gigs of free RAM um, free and yeah there's always less than than um, the full space like you don't have three gigabytes you have actually 2.85 or whatever okay um, that's basically it here all apps and what I liked about the system UI is that it's really absolutely um, clean there is no chunk pre-installed by you me, which is a good thing. Okay, um, we have different users, so that was some kind of an advertisement feature, whatever, that you can have multi accounts. I mean, yeah, not a huge feature for me, and I don't really care about this. Location, we'll do a GPS test later. GPS is not bad. Then here we have security. Um, yeah, you can use it. I verify unlock, but it's the biggest crap ever. No, I think that's my pattern. Yes, right. And um, first of all, you have to register um, your eyes, okay? So you have to look into that and it's it's just a piece of crap. I will just go and show you this shit right now. So guys, I just had a quick look at that iVerify service. I was using it for the last week too, but now there are some problems with um, the license key because actually iVerify, it's a company, and if you want to use that service, you have to pay a license fee or whatever. And it works like this. First of all, you have to register your eyes. So you basically just look into that window here as you can see and um, yeah your face has to be around 10 centimeters away from the phone and the unlocking process in my opinion takes way too long it takes around 30 seconds in the most cases and sometimes yeah not so long sometimes longer and this is way too long for me I'm also not sure how accurate that thing is I mean it only worked with my eyes but it's just too long I cannot use that and um, with the latest version here, it looks like the license key that you're using is not valid. Now, there's already an updated ROM with a new license, but you have to download it from China. The OTA, it, it still says up to date. I know Yumi will hate me for this, that I don't show this with the latest firmware, but honestly, um, downloading the ROM from China, it takes for me like a day, and then sometimes it just stops working, so the download crashes or whatever, and this is a real pain. But they have improved that feature and also that heart rate monitor thing, but it's still just a gimmick feature and not something you should buy the phone for if you like it. Okay, um, then let's have a look at the rest. So we have different accounts, as I've said before. Language and input, we can have a quick look at that. And yeah, we have German, for instance, Germany, Austria, but it's not a full Android 5.1 language pack, so some things are missing, but most of the languages are in there, so that's pretty good. Okay, you can set the keyboard to everything you want to, for sure, that's Android, you can do whatever you want. Then here we have backup and reset date and time, scheduled power on and off, accessibility, printing, and about the phone where we were before, and we are still up to date, even though there's already new firmware, it's 1.03 or something like that, which fixes the iVerify problem and also the heart rate monitor, which um, is still not working for me. Okay, so you see software buttons here inside of the display, um, here on the home screen, I mean it's kind of okay, system UI really smooth, always those damn Facebook messages. So here you have your notifications, as always the notification LED can light up in different colors, whatever you set it to, and there are different applications to control that notification LED, so no worries guys. Okay, here you can see the brightness slider, we have here quick toggles for Wi-Fi, which is actually kind of good on that phone, not too bad. Bluetooth, which is working, then airplane mode, auto-rotate, locations or GPS. We have here the torch, only back, so the front not working here, but um, you can use it with some other applications. 
We have hotspot mode, we have hot not included. Hot not is something like NFC, but it's not compatible with NFC. So basically just between MTK devices, you can just send pictures or whatever when the display touches the display of the other device. Kind of different to NFC. I would like to see NFC on that thing here, not just hot not because hot not kind of sucks. What we have here is the battery saver, and this is a really good feature, and you see it changes the UI a little bit, defects, animations, and helps a little bit to save power. Okay, um, yeah, turn it off, so there we go. Then let's have a look at all the basic features, and there we go. So here we have um, the dialer APK, then let's try to call here some random number, very popular here in Austria, and there we go. So, um, yeah, the speaker quality, um, it's okay. Then we can switch it to the external speaker and it's really crappy. Honestly, I have to say it's Yukitel and this one here are really shit speakers. Oops, somebody did um, answer the call and some kind of hotline. But well, um, the call quality is, is okay, but um, the speaker quality, so the main speaker here, um, it's not so good in my opinion. Then let's go back here. We have here the messaging application and there we go. Let's try to compose some message. Hello. Oh, no, there. Hello, people. And typing is really good. It's a five point capacitive touchscreen. So I had absolutely no problems with the touchscreen so far. No ghost touches or anything. And that's kind of good. Just the system UI was crashing from time to time. But Yumi is now pushing updates um, on this device. And that's pretty good. So there were like 10 OTAs in the last time before the release. And now I'm waiting for another OTA. But they are still working on it. Okay, then here we have uh, some applications which are pre-installed, haven't installed so much. So yeah, um, I think the most important application, first of all, is the camera. And the phone itself, it comes with not so many um, apps installed, so really clean Android 5.1. And now let's just go outside and let's have a look at this fancy camera application. All right, all right, boys and girls, we're now here outside in my garden and here's a quick camera test. We're currently here in 16 to 9 mode and you do not have to full megapixels in 16 to 9, so I think it was was um, 9.5 and 16 to 9 but it looks kind of good you see everything sharp here and you will see sample pictures on chinadevices.com so I'll just capture some upload them so make sure you check out the link down below in the description all right so we have a tap autofocus which is working you see the color adjustment is working light balance white balance everything okay um, then let's switch here to the front facing camera and this one here already looks kind of blurry and in 16 to 9 you only have 4 megapixels I can quickly show you that here in the settings. So maximum picture size 1 or 4 and here we have 4 to 3 then um, we get 5 megapixels. Now um, a front facing camera that supports that eye vision shit so it needs to have some high ISO rating. That means also when it's very dark um, it actually can, um, can work with a high ISO rate and see your eyes. It's not using the LED flash for some reason but I can show you how that looks like and it's really really bright. I mean it doesn't help a lot but um, it's very cool if you want to take selfies at night. But Honestly, I wouldn't use it um, when there's daylight. Okay, so, so far it's looking good. Let's go back. Whoops, and that was the wrong button. And we're now here back um, on the rear camera. Let's go here to the settings. Let's check this out. And here in the settings we have 9.5 megapixels in full screen. So you see that's maximum. And if we switch to 4 to 3, so um, then we get the full um, 13 megapixels which the Sony IMAX 214 should support. So you cannot get the full megapixels in 4 to 3. I mean, yeah, not a huge problem for me, but um, there are people who want to have the whole resolution all in 16 to 9. So um, if you want that, then probably this, uh, this phone or this camera on the phone is not the best for you. Okay, so electronic image stabilization. So there we go. Here's a quick video back camera test on the Yumi Ion. Um, it's using the Sony IMX214, as we have pointed out. And so far the video quality looks okay. The white balance and the lighting adjustment is working, as you can see. The colors, they look okay. Maybe they could look a little bit more tasty. So yeah, um, looks a little bit washed out maybe. But um, let's have a look at some objects in the background here. So let me focus. You see the lighting adjustment actually works. And the focus is also okay, so that seems to be good. 
but always just have a look um, at the computer right now and just check it for yourself is it enough for you because camera quality is always in the eye of the beholder but let's just go and let's have a look at some close-ups because I want to see how they look and the colors and there we go holy shit what's that that's a lawn mower robot or how you call it thing what a piece of shit but let's just go and here's a close-up come on focus camera yeah um, the close-up focus doesn't look so good so it has now a hard time to focus but now it's okay and yeah just check it for yourself how it looks like I mean the colors um, in reality I think it looks more orange it looks a little bit too yellow but um, it's okay guys so just check it for yourself and for me it's sufficient Alright, um, that's the video um, camera on the Yumi Ion. Okay guys, so here's a quick front facing camera test on the Yumi Ion. The LED flash is currently on as you can see, so it's really strong and I don't want to look into it because this really hurts. Then it's nice and wide angle when you start to record, so so far this is looking really good. I can get myself easily on the picture, that's absolutely no problem. Really nice so far. Then, um, yeah, the house here in the background, for instance, or the tree and everything here looks really kind of sharp. Here's some close-up, maybe. So, um, wow, that's really strong. I don't want to look into that. And at night, um, you probably can also take selfies with that. The only thing which looks kind of awkward is face beauty mode. Um, I've seen a lot of phones where face beauty mode looks really nice, like on my S6, but here um, it fucks up the brightness and um, it doesn't look that good like on other devices. But I have to say, um, if they would optimize the software just a little bit, the front facing camera is really nice on the Yumi Ion. But just check it for yourself now on the computer. As you can see, it's not laggy, lighting adjustment is working. Here you can see some trees in the background. So, so far this is looking really good here on the Yumi Ion. So guys, we're now here back on the smartphone and I just had a look at the pictures on the computer and they're quite okay and it shoots with a 2.2 aperture and you can also check them out. So I have the raw pictures on chinadevices.com, link down below. And yeah, the pictures, they look quite decent. Sony sensor, not too bad, but the front facing camera somehow looks really crappy. But it's optimized for that iVerify thing here. Here you can see that iVerify service is installed, but currently on the latest version, there are some problems with the license key, but this is going to be fixed like next week. Okay, um, flash notification, FM radio, yeah, the usual stuff, but you have to use a headset as antenna. LED test the light manager, so I just played around with the notification LED, but you can also change the color and everything in the settings if you want to, as we've seen before. It comes by default with the max equalizer, and yeah, um, with the equalizer, it sounds a little bit different, but quality of the check and the speaker, it's still not the best. But um, I would say it's quite okay. So with the Yumi Voix Blue, um, the sound quality over Bluetooth was actually kind of good, but 3.5mm check and the integrated speaker is just crap. Okay, um, yeah, um, then let's have a quick look at the MTK engineering mode so I can show you here the bands and let's go here to band mode. Now SIM1 supports um, quad band on GSM, we have here quad band on WCDMA and LT we have 13578 and 28. Uh, 38, 39, 40, 41, no 20, but I'm not so familiar with that actually um, because I don't have LT and um, I'm also not sure which one you need in different countries, but there is some, some website where you can check what frequency band you need for your country. So maybe make sure you check that before you buy the phone. Then here we have SIM card slot 2 and you see um, we have here quad band on GSM, so that's the second SIM card slot. Okay, that's regarding the bands. Then let's go back here. We have the Play Store pre-installed, so um, all the Google apps are pre-installed. If you want to root it, you can easily do that with Root Joy. They're currently optimizing it. And um, also in the Play Store, absolutely no problems to download all the apps. As you can see, I've installed a lot of crap already on the smartphone. Have used Facebook, WhatsApp, all communication shit, and had no problems with that. Then here you can see U Health and um, yeah, the heart rate monitor. That's some port from that Samsung app and whatever. It's it's just total crap. It's always crashing on me and. Okay, it did already hang up again. I could use it once, then it was crashing. I just reflashed it, it was still broken. I'm not sure what's up with that, but honestly, 
um, this feature is something I wouldn't use. I'm not even using that on my Galaxy S6, which has something like a real sensor, not just a front-facing camera and the sensors here. But um, yeah, it's just a gimmick feature for marketing, but not a real feature I would actually use. Voice search is working like a charm, and here we have the rest like WhatsApp and YouTube, and so far, yeah, um, I used it just like for media, for chatting, and so on, and um, yeah, the battery lifetime was about a day. So I'm pretty sure if they optimize the ROM a little bit, because it's still kind of buggy, there are still some small problems, then maybe there is a bit more than a day um, with a full battery. But so far, um, it's quite okay. Alright guys, I don't want to make this video too long, then I would say let's go, let's jump into some benchmarks, some um, speaker test, GPS test, LED flash test, and after this you will hear my final conclusion about the Yumi Ion. Here's just a quick LED flash test, and there we go. And the LED flash on a Yumi Ion, it's really strong. Don't look into that, makes you almost blind. Dual tone, as you can see, so we have here some nice warm light. And it's looking actually really good. So you can light up here the whole desk from one meter distance, and this is not bad at all. So the LED flash is kind of nice. We can also quickly go and try the front-facing camera LED flash. So let me enter the camera application. And here you see um, how it looks. Um, yeah, let's just capture here a picture maybe. So you can see the ISO rating and darkness. And here's the front-facing camera. So that is looking good so far. Let's switch the LED flash on and there we go. And holy crap, this is really bright. Can you see that? And selfies in a bar, oh my god, I look like shit, but selfies in a bar or whatever in a club shouldn't be a problem with that LED flash. It's really, really strong and not that weak like on the Ulephone B Touch, but it's really kind of useless. Now, here's a quick movie test, speaker test, whatever you want to call that. YouTube, no copyright sounds, YouTube application, and well, let's just hit the play button. And I mean, just listen for yourself. The quality of the speaker, in my opinion, is really crappy. Just like the UKTEL UA speaker, um, I absolutely don't like it. I mean, yeah, speaker is working without a problem, but the sound, it's so flat, it's... Yeah, it's, it's kind of crappy. I just don't like the quality. But movie playback or whatever, no problem at all. What's kind of annoying is um, it takes some time until the buttons here disappear. So I really don't like the softer buttons, but except of that, um, yeah, it's okay. Now here comes a quick GPS test in the GPS test application. And so far it's looking really good. We have a 3 fix as you can see. And it's very cloudy today. I think it will rain in the next hour because it's really dark. But you see um, the GPS signal is looking good. We're currently driving around. Accuracy seems to be very high, so 110 feet, which is around, I don't know, 30 meters or something like that. But um, actually Android um, 5 always shows such a high accuracy, um, way higher than for instance Android, so um, another tool to check out the GPS signal. And I can definitely confirm this phone supports GLONASS and we have 22 satellites in view. We have 19 in use, which is definitely not too bad. Okay, so let's wait until we are out of the roundabout and then let's just go and let's drive a little bit faster. And there we go. So, so you see the accuracy goes here really up with the speed. Currently driving 100, 120. And we have a accuracy of 160, 170 feet. But um, yeah, um, it's not looking too bad. You see, when you start to accelerate, then you will maybe lose some satellites. But it holds the GPS signal, and it's looking, yeah, it's looking okay. It's average, but we also have um, very bad weather conditions today. So GPS on the Yumi Ion is definitely working. Um, maybe not the best I've seen on a phone with that chipset, but it's definitely okay. A quick navigation test in Sajik offline navigation. So we now take the wrong road and let's see what um, the phone is doing, how long it takes to reroute. So that was something like 15 seconds, that's okay. Then now let's drive a little bit faster. Let's see what happens, if it gets jumpy or whatever. And there we go. Oh well. Um, looks quite okay and it's really accurate. So we just passed the road and we also passed it on the phone and now let's take the corner there so let's drive here to the right 
Oh, holy crap, sorry. And let's see how accurate that is. Well, it was a bit too early, but it's okay. Uh, let's drive again. So, I had a look at the GPS performance now for the last couple of days. And it doesn't matter if it was um, sunny weather, if it was rainy or cloudy like today. GPS was working actually um, all the time. It's not the best GPS performance I've seen, but it's definitely good and it's working. It doesn't show me off the road, it's not jumpy. Time to find a fix is very low and that's actually good. So GPS on the Yumi Ion is definitely working and it is doing what it should. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so the benchmarks are finished and here you can see the result in on 2264 bits, 33,000 points. A bit more than other devices with the same chipset because this one here comes with 3GB of RAM. But well, um, the 1GB additional of RAM doesn't really um, affect the score so much. So just 1 or 2K up maybe. Then here you can see the rankings. So regarding the raw performance, we're on the level of the LG G3, but well, the new MTK chipset is really good optimized for 64 bits and the new Android 5.1. And here under info you can see it's definitely 5.1, 64-bit supported. Let's go down here, you see here a lot of sensors, but as you will see later, they are not working as they should. Then 13-megapixel um, camera, full HD display, Mali T720 GPU, so for games it's actually quite okay. Okay, here's the Geekbench um, result, and we get here a single core score of around 600 and a multi-core score of about 2600. So it's a bit less than the MTK6752, but this is because multi-cores are clocked way higher on the 6752, so all the cores are clocked at 1.7 GHz, and this really boosts the performance here in the benchmarks. Okay, operating system once again, 2.85 GB of RAM, and once again, here the score. Then regarding the display, so um, yeah, the touch screen, it's a 5-point um, capacitive touch screen, that's pretty good, so typing or playing, no problem at all. Then here's the sensor box, and you see it comes with a lot of sensors, like also gyroscope, but... Holy crap, what's up with the damn gyroscope? Not working. Same goes for the magnetic sensor. Um, Micro Tesla always at zero, so absolutely no change. Same goes for the orientation sensor. So actually, you just have the basic sensors like proximity sound, accelerometer, but um, the rest for me wasn't working at all. Maybe the sensors are really working, but just the firmware's crap. I cannot confirm it yet. But if something is going to change, I will post it on ChinaDevices.com. Now here's the result of the speed test. We get a ping of 41 milliseconds, download 12 Mbits and upload almost 3 Mbits. And you see why I don't have 4G LT, because this is almost as fast as my home internet connection, which is 16 down and 3 up. So I really don't need 4G LT, but I can say you also get really nice speeds on 3G on the Yumi Ion. Okay, then let's do a quick gaming test in Modern Combat. Then here's a quick gaming test on the Yumi Ion. And gaming, for instance, feels way better on the MTK6752 with 720p display, for instance. But it's okay. Now, um, this device here runs the Mali T720 and the T760, which you can find in the MTK6752 chipset. It's a bit more powerful, so it runs Modern Combat definitely better. I play this game actually quite often. But um, on 6752, devices on the most of them, it's way smoother. So it depends on what you play, so heavy 3D games, I mean, they are playable, but the experience is not that nice, for instance, like on the 1.7 GHz octa-core. Could be definitely better, but normal games, like some casual games, they absolutely no problem on the Yumi Ion, but the overall 3D performance, I would say, average, and it's okay for the price. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're now here at the end of this full review of the Yumi Ion and here comes my final conclusion. Now for the price of around 160 to 180 depends on the shop, not too bad at all. Design, you have to like it, I somehow don't like it because of the software buttons. The rest is quite decent. Keep in mind it's not a full metal body phone, so just the back is made out of metal and the inner frame. Even though it's not a full metal body phone, it's quite stable, with the plastic at the top and the bottom, probably better reception, reception quality really kinda okay. Regarding the battery, now I was able to get through a full day. I'm a really heavy user, um, 
I didn't really play, but I was just um, watching my YouTube movies all the time, commenting, blah, blah, blah. So um, if you're a normal user, maybe more than a day, but still not too good. Now for a 3000 mAh battery, okay, it's in full HD display, um, it could be a bit better, but um, honestly, I have to say, one day shouldn't be a problem for the most users. Then the LED flash at the front, it's very strong, it's it's nice, but it's a bit too yellow, so um, picture just somehow they look too warm in my opinion but it's okay. Now the rear camera outside beautiful pictures um, in the darkness very slow shutter speed could be also a little bit better. Um, you will see some night pictures on my channel you can check out the ISO how it looks and everything so make sure you go to chinadevices.com link should be down below by tomorrow. Okay, so all in all, phone is not too bad. What I like about it is the notification LED. This one here is beautiful, customizable. The system UI, it's really kind of smooth. Now, they have delayed shipping, probably because there are some serious bugs. I'm not sure if it's still there, but if I just cranked up the volume button, nope, now it's working. Um, it did just freeze the system. For instance, the heart rate monitor freezes the system. Sometimes it says system UI is crashing. So the software could be definitely better. So I really hope that Yumi is pushing out Otis, that there are custom ROMs. But with root Choi, it's so easy to root it, to, um, yeah, to check out different ROMs. It's really nice actually. So, so far I like the Yumi Ion even though I'm not so happy with the design. If you want to see a dismantling video check out my um, channel. Um, I will just link it down below so make sure you check it out. There you can see that the battery is actually, I wouldn't say fake, but it's a bit, um, bit lower than advertised, so 3000 mAh. But the build quality of it, it's definitely okay. Front facing camera, kind of bad. Display is looking beautiful. Regarding 3D and gaming performance, um, could be better, could be way better. So if you are really into gaming, you should get um, the MTK6752 with the Mali T760 because this is a whole better gaming experience. Okay guys, so that's regarding the Yumi Ion. You can find it on eFox Shop. Link is down below in the description. Make sure you check it out. Phone not too bad at all. But please, um, if you have to buy this extra, the covers, just save the money. They are definitely not worth it if you have to just glue them to the back of, of the phone and then you have to fiddle around with the buttons. Absolutely not worth it, but except of that, it's a nice phone. Now, um, maybe today I will unbox the Elephone P8002, so stay tuned. Elephone S2 and S2 Plus here, so let's see um, how far I can get today. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day and bye-bye. See ya!